All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon, and in this video, we're going to talk about what is going on in the welterweight division. You have Jerron Boots Ennis, who is being targeted by a former champion in a fight that looks like it could be made in early 2023. But at the same time, man, your Danny's Ugas had a story to tell about that Errol Spence Jr. fight. Let's talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon. And in this video, we're going to be in the 147 pound division where we have Jerron Boots Ennis, who is being targeted by your Danies Ugas for a shot at one of those vacant belts if it winds up being vacant early part of next year. Uh, says that he is returning after those injuries that he suffered from Errol Spence Jr. And it looks like uh, he may be able to get that done. But man, I'm telling you, when he decides, Described what happened in that Errol Spence Jr. fight. I'm just really, really glad that that dude is back and going to be able to fight. But at the same time, just thinking, man, if you was just a little less brave, you wouldn't have had the problems that you had. But before I get into that, let me welcome you back to the channel. If you are new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button, hit that bell icon so you can be notified of when we release more videos. And also, if you're a longtime subscriber and supporter, thank you so much for your continued support. It really, really does mean a lot. All right. So let's get into this. We're in the welterweight division and kind of looking a little bit past uh, this holdup that we have at the top of the division where you have Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford who hold all four of the major championship belts between them. Obviously, Errol having three, the WBA, the WBC, and the IBF, and Terrence Crawford having the WBO. They're in the negotiation for what many people would consider to be a super fight. But at the same time, the welterweight division still remains one of the deepest divisions in boxing, and there's a lot of fights that can be made in that division. A lot of up there's veterans that are in that weight division that are looking to see, you know, when they're going to be fighting for a championship next. You've got uh, young contenders coming in, coming up who are looking for their shots at at it. And in the fight that we're going to talk about now. That is the that is the exact uh, two type of fighters that we're talking about. One is your Danis Ugas, who is the former WBA super champion, uh, who is coming off of a loss to Errol Spence Jr. Uh, and then Jerron Boots Ennis, who was in, I do believe, the top four of every major championship, by, of every major sanctioning body, including the WBA, which I do believe he's in the top three of. I think the only one that at the last time I checked, the only ranking, only sanctioning body that, that Jerron Ennis was outside of the top three was the was the WBO. Uh, and that happened when Keith Thurman became the number one contender and everybody got pushed down one. Right. But uh, so your Danis Ugas says that he wants to fight uh, Jerron Ennis. And ain't backing down from a fight with Jerron Ennis. But he also talked about the fact that he is now able to, for the first time, practice uh, fight with full contact after that Errol Spence Jr. fight. If you have not seen the Errol Spence, your Danny Zugas fight, I tell you, man, go and watch that. It is a lesson in savage brutality, right? Not just savageness or brutality, savage brutality. That fight, but in between both guys, right? Uh, in the beginning of the fight, your Danny's Ugas was given, you know, he was given that work to Errol Smith Jr. too. Errol wasn't in there just fighting by himself, right? Um, but over time, as Errol, as, as, uh, Errol was able to get inside of Ugas's jab, was able to kind of neutralize that that sweeping right, that looping right hand that uh, your Danny's Ugas was using to throw him off. He just eventually started wearing him down, wearing him down, wearing him down all the way to the point where you could literally see this guy's body be, be, uh, begin to break down. According to Derek James, who's the trainer for Errol Spence, he said that he not only had the very obvious orbital bone because, uh, you know, the guy's eye was that was looked like it was that big, completely shut. And it looked like it was shut, getting shut, you know, several rounds before it closed all the way up. But also Derek James said uh, that he had broken it, that he had that uh, he had suffered a broken nose and Ugas suffered a broken rib. Just an incredible, incredible beatdown. And now he is actually able 
again for the first time since first time since that time he is actually able to get back in a boxing ring man so look I have so much respect for your Danny's Ugas because of the of the way that he fought Errol Spence Jr. and the way that he refused to quit in that fight when it was very, very obvious that 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 those injuries were getting severe. He it wasn't a situation where, you know, his a trainer threw in the towel early on as soon as it looked like he may get hurt. He took pretty much he took the same punishment that Kell Brook took, except for Kell Brook. Uh, took a knee and was like, nah, I can't do this. Now, Kell Brook had already suffered a bro broken orbital bone uh, in his in the previous fight that he had had with Gennady Golovkin. So he was a little bit more familiar with what that felt like. But your Danny's Ugas just kept going, kept going. And I'm looking forward to seeing this guy back in the ring. And I do think that a fight with him and Jerron Ennis would be a great, great fight for both of these, for both of those guys. Whether it is for a, um, whether it is for a, uh, major championship belt or not. Now, as far as, you know, just assuming that this fight with Errol Spence Jr. and Terrence Crawford get get made, I don't think, obviously, that your Danny Zugas is going to be back and able to fight Boots this, you know, even, you know, November or December, because, again, he was just cleared to have, you know, for him to have full contact uh, sparring. And even then, he said he's still not doing it. He's still going to wait a while and, a little, and train a little more. So, you know, this will probably get pushed out in 2023. But if Jerron can't get a fight, with um with Errol or Terrence and he can't get a fight with uh Keith Thurman your Danny's Ugas is about you know as good an option as he can get you know and it's something that you know if he looks really good should should finally impress people however I will tell you that you know it Jerron's career to me does really seems very similar to Errol Spence Jr. You're going to have a lot of people who are just not going to give Jerron a lot of credit because they don't want to believe that Jerron is as good as Jerron is because there's other people that have been pushing him very hard, uh, you know, pushing him his name hard, you know, early. So they're going to be really resistant. And so if he winds up beating either a Keith Thurman or a Yordani Zugas, they're just going to turn around and say, well, that uh, Yordani Zugas had a broken orbital bone from Errol Spence Jr. And he had already lost to, you know, to to other guys before that. So it really doesn't mean anything. And then they'll probably do the same thing as it relates if he's able to beat Keith Thurman, say, oh, well, you know, does a Manny Pacquiao beat him? What big deal does that make? Look, I especially after having seen you've been waiting around on this Errol Spence Terrence Crawford fight. I'm at the point where I just want to see good fights, right? And that is a good fight. And it may not be, a, you know, the absolute best fight that can be made at 147 pounds. But I'm telling you, if you are not an extremely elite fighter, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to beat your Danny Zugas in, in any way, shape or form, because the dude is an excellent, excellent fighter at a weight class that he's used to. Um, I do believe the earlier, the earlier losses in his career you know, like he said that he wasn't, you know, 100 percent in. He wasn't as disciplined as he was later on. And some fighters just lose fights early in their career and they learn from them. and They become better. You know, one loss does not make your whole career. But anyway, I hope your Danny Zugas gets what he's looking for. Gets that fight with with um, uh, with uh Jaron Ennis or and or gets that title shot when these vacant when these belts free up or if these belts don't free up and whoever went and, and these guys don't fight and they stay at that weight class. Anyway, that's my take on the matter. You let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Peace.